Hold on. Okay, inshallah. Okay, Akhi Abdullah, welcome to the room. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, inshallah. Uh, Brother Abdullah will tell us his story about how he became Muslim. Brother Abdullah is a revert and he's been practicing Islam for the last seven years. Inshallah, I will give him the mic so he can tell us the story. Uh, please invite your, uh, your pal, your guest, inshallah, from Muslims. Everyone is welcome to listen to the story. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Well, the brother wanted me to get on the mic and tell everybody my story on how I became a Muslim. My story is pretty simple. One thing about myself is that uh, before I came into Islam, I was a very observant Christian. I was always going to the church, always reading my Bible, and just always, always praying to God just wanting to do the right things and be the right person that, that he wanted me to be. I just tried to live, you know, an upright life and just uh, just do what I thought was best. Um, my family, they came from denominations, but they didn't really practice the religion. Uh, my father said he was a Methodist, but just myself, I went to a Baptist church because it was the closest church that was, that was just near me. So, before I entered into Islam, obviously, you know, with everything that was uh, on the TV about, you know, 9-11 and the Iraq War and this and that about Muslims, um, in the middle of all of that, I was, I was really searching. I didn't even know that I was searching. It just, it just sort of, ha it just sort of happened. I didn't really recognize that. I was looking for more. You know, while I was a Christian, uh, I loved my religion. And more so than thinking of myself as a Christian, I was the sort of person that would always see myself as just trying my best to follow the footsteps of all the prophets that came before. You know, just all the prophets that were in the Torah and the uh, the Psalms and the, in, in the Gospel, just in all the books of of what we believe to be revelation and or you know even the bible so in the middle of all that with everything that was going on on the tv and just within my soul my, myself i guess you could say uh, i thought to myself okay with everything that's being said on the tv and on the radio and on the internet about Islam and Muslims, I really need to go and try to understand these things myself. Because it's one thing to hear something on the TV or on the radio or in, or in the newspaper than it is to actually go and study that particular thing because people people are going to have, you know, biased ideas and try to influence other people with those biased ideas. With those biased ideas, sorry. Um, so after after I finished high school and you know I moved to uh, to a place that uh, you know just a small town you know it's this was the place where I was trying to grow that much more in my religion I I tried to go to my grandparents house to, to help them because they were they were you know hold on what is it oh thank you so I went to stay with my grandparents after I finished high school because I wanted to help them in whatever it was that they needed and I wanted to be there with them because I thought that that it would be a better experience for me as a, as somebody that was a Christian. So when the time came and I finally said to myself, okay, you know what, I'm going to look at Islam because I, I've seen these Muslims and 
besides what the media has said, they take the religion very seriously. So I, I could respect that. So I go into Google and I typed in preachers convert to Islam or preachers embrace Islam. And the first website that, that came up was the website of Sheikh Yusuf Estes. And I think that at that time the website was islamtomorrow.com. So I clicked on this link, and there it was. There was this this man from from uh, from Texas, like me, and he had his whole story there on how he came into Islam. So I clicked on his story because I wanted to learn more. I wanted to know from beginning to end what was it that that made this man choose Islam. What was it that made this man, who was a preacher, who was, uh, you know, someone that was really trying to spread the gospel? So while while I'm in the article, I'm reading along, and you know, it's it's a very it. My story is very simple, but Subhanallah, the way that uh, the way the law guides you, it's it's something else. It's sometimes it's so simple, but you don't understand how Allah can guide people in the way that He does at the times that He does. So, whenever I'm in His article and I'm reading about how He became a Muslim, I saw that He was talking about the Quran and how the Quran itself was a perfect a perfect revelation that came from God that in over the 1400 years since its revelation not an ayat has been changed that it's been memorized by people from all around the world just etc it's it was just amazing but but what the bottom line for me was about the Quran is that it spoke to me in a way that no other scripture could ever speak. It spoke to me directly. It made sense. It it was. It's like someone tapping you on on your shoulder. You turn around, and everything is just shown to you, and it and it opens your eyes. So for me, that was one thing, but one thing I should have mentioned before is that it was Prophet Muhammad Wasallam that was easy for me to see as a prophet. Now previously I said that while I was a Christian it was easy for me to not so much think of myself as a Christian but as a person that that thought of himself as trying to follow the prophets. So when I saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu I saw that this man wasn't bringing another message. He wasn't bringing anything different from what the prophets of the past brought, except that the message that he was bringing has not been changed. It has not been manipulated. It hasn't. It hasn't suffered from the ills that people have put in to the teachings of past prophets. So his teaching and the book that he's showing us that comes from Allah, it all confirmed for me that this man was sent for all mankind. And you know, I've I've told my story so many times and it just it really affects me whenever I talk about how I came to a slam because for every person it's different. It's just something that SubhanAllah, I don't even know how to explain it. So, after seeing the Quran, after seeing the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after praying for guidance for, for, for years, without even thinking beforehand, I, I remember, SubhanAllah, please forgive me if I'm stuttering on the mic or whatnot. But I would remember that I would see the Jewish people and then I would see the Muslim people and you know, I saw the Christian people too and I said, 
God, if you want me to be Jewish, then I'll be Jewish. If you want me to, to be a Christian, then I'll be a Christian. If you want me to be a Muslim, then I'll, then I'll even be a Muslim. Just, just, just guide me. Just show me the way. So, in short, I saw the pure message from God with the final prophet that was sent for all of mankind, not just a particular nation or a tribe, but the prophet that was sent for all mankind in the most perfect and complete deen. So, with all of that being said, that's, that's how I came to Islam. I just realized, I just woke up to, to the truth. I didn't get myself stuck on a lot of the prejudices that, that come from some of the Christian, uh, some of these Christian leaders that, uh, that that look to deceive people about Islam to make themselves look as if they're guided by talking about a moon god or this or that. But the bottom line is is that there is only one God, and it's Allah, and that the God that Jesus was worshiping it was Allah. After I saw Islam, I embraced it immediately, and I just came to monotheism, Islamic monotheism, just immediately. So, Jazakallah Khairan for giving me the opportunity to tell your brothers my story, brothers and sisters. Jazakallah Khairan. So, with that, the brother I know is... Uh, wanting for questions and answers, so I'm going to get off the mic, but I request your brothers and sisters to keep the screen clear, because I am legally blind, I can't see that well, and I have my screen enlarged, so I can see the fonts. Um, it's not too bad, don't, don't worry about it yourself, I know what I'm doing. But just keep that in mind. So questions only, please. Jazakallah. What was the reaction of my family? Um, oh, just uh, one, one question at a time. What was the reaction of my family? Well, my family, in the beginning... Well, in the beginning, after I met Shahada, the very day that I came back from the masjid, you know, for uh, for Salat al Juma, whenever my grandmother actually learned that I actually became a Muslim, that I that I took the Shahada, uh, she got on the phone and called my whole family, told them that I became a Muslim, and just uh, spread a lot of pointless pointless uh, paranoia. But, um, you know, my family, they never really accepted me being a Muslim. And, you know, I don't, I don't expect them to accept me being a Muslim because we know what the Quran says and that they will only accept you when you become just like them. So, you know, I, I respect my mother, I respect my father, I, I love my family. But uh, they didn't take it well. So that's, that's for that one particular question. And... The other brother asked me if I need any uh, help learning Arabic. Well, I've been able to read and write Arabic, and I know Tajweed pretty well. So I've known that for about six years. So it's not anything that I really need to work on. I've actually taught a little bit myself. Yeah, I can recite. I can. Oh, no, I, I couldn't recite. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that's just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty shy. So, let's see, what else do we have here? Some strut, can you say, some I really, you know, I'm shy, so. Do you find that? No, not at all. No, not at all. As soon as I saw Islam was 
uh, pulling people back to the truth of what the prophets of the past were teaching and how you get atonement, it was very easy for me to accept that because before I even looked into Islam, I believed in what the prophets brought in the past, not so much of what uh, the people might have introduced into Christianity. So I, I guess you could say I was a Muslim and I didn't even know it. So just to embrace Islam was a formal progression. Uh, any other questions? Um, let me think about that. Well, you got to understand, as soon as I left where I was after, uh, you know, after school, I, uh, I didn't really have anybody that I was connected to. So, no, that wasn't really a problem. But uh, colleagues, well, one thing one thing I can tell you that it's not easy to be a revert because, you know, not that I that I'm the sort of person that would flash my religion or, or wear it on my shoulder, but um, you know I've actually lost work due to me being a Muslim. I've actually, I mean they're not going to outright tell you that you know it's because you're a Muslim. They'll all, always give you some other excuse, but. Uh, Unfortunately, it's it's not been easy. So you know you have to you know being an American, it's not easy for Americans to see other Americans become Muslim. So you have to hide your religion. Can you read the ayat that you made you embrace Islam? It wasn't a particular ayat that that I could point out. So just just the basic knowledge about Islam and how Islam isn't bringing anything new, that it's just to complete what came before. It was very easy for me to, to embrace Islam. Oh, I know. I know. I know that people have suffered for embracing Islam, but, you know, Allah says in the Quran that you cannot say that you believe without being tested. So... Allah's help is always there. That's one thing that you can't ever worry about. You you always have to know that Allah is there for you. And no matter who comes your way, no matter who opposes you, no matter who does anything, the fact is is that Allah is the the Lord of mankind. It's the Lord of He's the Lord of the world of the world. So I don't really I I put my trust into Allah. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I know that. Yeah, that's uh, definitely. Whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. I agree. Did you make Hajj? No, I haven't made Hajj yet, but uh, I hope to, inshallah. If Allah gives me the means, then I'll go. Any other questions? Any other questions? It's completely changed my life. It's completely changed the direction of my life. Um, you know, I got married to, you know, to to an, to an Arab Muslim, and you know, even where I live now, it's where I, where I am now isn't where I would have been if I didn't become Muslim. So, Allah has protected me from a lot of bad things. And uh, you know a lot of the just just a lot of the the ills of society. I didn't really get you know engaged in much of that stuff because I I embraced Islam when I was 19. So and even beforehand I was you know I just tried to do the right thing. How is my Fajr prayer going? How's my Fajr prayer going? <laughs> Well, I make it. I try to make it. When uh, you know how the alarm clock goes. Any other questions?
Any other questions at all? Yeah, actually, my grandmother did on my father's side. But, uh, you know, a couple of years after she took the Shahada, she died. But uh, that was our little secret. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she kind of accepted Islam the same way I did. It was very easy. But you you have to keep in mind that that uh, Allah is the one that guides. So, you know, if if something comes into a person's heart, you know, when they feel that they want to be a Muslim, when it, when they feel that that the Quran is right and that the Prophet Muhammad is indeed the Prophet Muhammad, that, that, that he is indeed the Prophet and the Messenger, then, then that's from Allah. I mean, anything else? Yeah, good luck with that. Well, you know, it's one thing that I'm not used to is that I, I live in the uh, the northeast, so you know, it was a lot easier to make salat al fajr in Texas than than it is here in, in the northeast. That doesn't mean that I don't make it. I do make it. I do. It just uh, it's a big struggle. Yeah. Uh, New York. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm I've gotten used to it. You know, it's colder here than, than how it usually is in Texas, but you know, you, you get used to it after after a bit of time. Oh, okay. Well, Brother, are you, are you done recording? Let me know if you're if you're done. Uh, it's not far from me. I'm in Brooklyn. Yeah, those are in Brooklyn. Pretty far from me, though. I don't really uh, get the opportunity to go there too much. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to give up the microphone. So thank you, brothers and sisters, for giving me the opportunity. Assalamu alaikum. I decided to raise my hand because I asked you about the Hajj, and since you didn't answer me, I guess because the green was more better for you. <laughs> I said, I'm just going to ask him right on mic. Uh, Abdullah, did you, uh, you did the Hajj? Inshallah, may Allah, uh, may Allah make, make it easy for you and help you to... Uh, inshallah, uh, p perform your Hajj. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what, 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 what did you really? Uh, what was the thing that you found in the Quran more interesting? First days when you started reading about the Quran. Do you remember like what was the surah? What things that really? Uh, I know the whole Quran, mashallah, is is all together the same. Is all important, uh, interesting. And uh, did you miss anything from 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 the past? Do you really feel like? Uh, your freedom was taken away from you. Uh, uh, that you uh, you wish to go to go back and not be a Muslim, inshallah. Or do you feel that Islam has given you your freedom, inshallah? Uh, I'll give you the mic, inshallah. And if I have any other question, I'll let you know. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. If you could just type in the first question. But uh, do I feel? Have I ever felt that I wanted to go back? Oh yeah, first question. Yeah, this the uh, after I became Muslim. One after I became a Muslim, one thing that uh, 
that really helped me to stand my ground. Not that I ever had doubt. I, I never did have doubt in Islam. I always, you know, as soon as I came into the into the fold of Islam, I, I never looked back. But, uh, you know, one of the, the surahs that, you know, the brother that, that actually gave me the shahada, the shahada, he was a revert himself, was a uh, surah to Baqarah. But do I feel that I... Have I ever felt that I wanted to turn back? No, never. Because the Hidayah from Allah, it's... Believe me, the, the Hidayah that, the, that, uh, that Allah gives to people when they really want it, it uh, you can never look back because it's, it's the help from Allah that Allah has guided you. But do I feel that I've lost my freedom? Um, actually, you know, since I became a Muslim, my, my ideas, my, my ideology, it really changed. Because, you know, before, before I became a Muslim, I was, you know, as an American, I was, you know, I, I had my ideas, okay? But now as a Muslim, do I believe that I need to be, you know, quote-unquote free? I don't really think in that way. The way that I think is that I am a slave of Allah. I am a servant of Allah. And I believe in obeying Allah. Because to obey Allah and to obey the commandments that He's given us and to follow the Sunnah in, in that light is a way for someone to, to be successful. So do I think that uh, that I need to listen to music and that I need to do this and to do that and to be happy and that that's freedom? I... If being free means that you can just really do whatever and it be detrimental to yourself and to society, then, then I just don't believe in that. Um, I'm the sort of person that I, I just I, since I've accepted Islam, I've accepted the the uh, the law of Allah. So I, that's what I believe in. Do I believe in? I, I don't mean to get all political in here, but do I believe in this uh, this this democracy and everything? N no, I I don't. Western democracy, no. It's um, it's quite contrary to what is in the core of what I believe in. I am a Muslim. So, you know, whatever Allah has given us, then, then that's what I, then that's what I peacefully submit myself to. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Uh, Brother Abdullah, were you done with the mic, inshallah? Or, I don't know, because I saw your hand. Well, I saw the mic. I saw you drop the mic, or I don't know if you're done. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask you a very brief question. Um, for those, okay, Jazakallah khair, brother. Uh, first of all, um, before I begin, I just wanted to say a very inspiring story, mashallah, very beneficial, and uh, we're very we're very glad to have you here with us, sharing your story. It's 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 a wonderful story. It's very inspiring for us and for those who who are are new Muslims. I just wanted to ask you. Um, what advice what advice do you have for those who are for those who are in a situation that you were before like meaning in your shoes subhanallah i'm trying to wear this okay what advice do you have for those who are where you were before does that make sense you know what advice do you have for those who are looking for the truth and for those who are where you say you were before you accepted Islam. Um, is my question clear, inshallah? Brother Abdullah, yes? Okay, jazakallah khair. Okay, mic is free. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump the mic, brother. But, um, oh, thank you. Um, what's the advice that I would give? Being that, being that I've been Muslim for seven years, 
I've had my own experiences and I've seen the experiences of other people. So one thing that I could say is that for somebody that's new to Islam is that you need to you need to make a lot of dua. Just make a lot of dua and be patient. And take your time because you know to to be a Muslim and to to know the ropes it may take a little bit of time but in time you'll pick up everything you'll you'll learn how to to uh, read and recite Surah Al-Fatiha you'll learn how to make the Salat you'll learn everything else but one thing that you have to make sure of is that you represent Islam in the best way possible uh, whenever I first became Muslim I made a lot of mistakes in the way that my family perceived Islam because I didn't exactly know Islam myself because I was, you know, I was like a baby Muslim. So you have to represent in a decent, more than decent, you have to be an ambassador of Islam to, to your family and to, to whatever people you're from. You have to be an, ambas an ambassador to Islam for, for those people. So, brief. You have to take your time, be patient with the tests that come your way, and just know that Allah is on your side. Don't don't lose hope, and don't don't think that things are too complicated because they're really not. So, yeah, nothing really comes else to uh, to mind. I, I don't want to repeat myself. For non-Muslims who want to know Islam. Well, if you really want to know Islam, the only place that you can go to get the pure knowledge about Islam is the Quran. And because, uh, you know, the, the Quran is in the original Arabic language, the, the closest thing you could come to is a good translation of the Quran. So if you wanted to get that translation and talk to a, you know, a person that, that knows the Quran, I, I think there's there's I, I have a website for for non-Muslims that I would recommend. But um, if you really want to get to know Islam, if you really want to get to know without reading reading a book, without reading the whole Quran, one thing that I would suggest is a couple of things on YouTube. It's pretty simple. Uh, you know, just Yusuf Estes lectures and to get the fundamentals, I would say the Dean Show, but that's just for the person that wants to hurry up and, and get get the gist of what Islam, what the basics of Islam are. But uh, yeah, those those shows are really really good. You just have to focus on the basics, but keep things easy. You do not want to. Uh, if somebody's even thinking about coming into Islam, one thing that I that you've got to do. This is one mistake that I made. Is uh, you push like you push things on the people like for instance um, my stepbrother years back he took shahada I gave him shahada and you know I told him about Islam but because I was a new revert myself <coughs> because I was a new revert myself because I was a new Muslim <coughs> I'm sorry I'm not things are coming out right I did not represent Islam in the proper way because I was running 60 miles an hour, not making baby steps, when the first thing that he needed to do was to just be able to sit up. Yes, it is. But uh, for non-Muslims, YouTube is a, is a good solution. But one thing that I would be, one thing that I would want to tell the people is that you've got to be uh, aware that there are a lot of videos on YouTube that slander Islam and, and don't really bring the, the truth about Islam or, or even just the reality of Islam. They, they try to distort things. So for a non-Muslim that's really wanting to learn about Islam from Muslims, you've got to keep an open mind, but don't let yourself get... Uh, stuck on what you see on the TV or, or 
in the news. You have to keep things simple. Because Islam is simple. Okay. Mic free. And a question that I would like to ask you is, how was your um, your experience with Muslims and going to the mosque, meeting with Muslims? Uh, did you find it hard? Did you uh, find some cold shoulders? <laughs> was it? Uh, did you uh, see something different from before? Did you experience something different uh, as you read in the Quran? Uh, and I will give you the mic, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, in the beginning, yes, I did see some different, uh, some different cultures and some different traditions. But, you know, it was really a pleasure and a privilege because, you know, if you've never really been outside the U.S. at that time, I was I had only really seen nothing but the U.S. It's nice because you get to get a broader view of the world and uh, you know you get to learn about different cultures and whatnot but um, have I come across different cultural problems yeah some of whenever you go into a uh, into a masjid where the people don't really know you um, people get their ideas and being that you know I'm in Brooklyn you know you can imagine how that is so do Muslims it has there been cultural problems? Yes, because a lot of Muslims, for for instance, say if they're from Pakistan, uh, they'll have these really really twisted misconceptions about Americans, and a lot of them are pretty pretty tragic. Because you know if you've been here long enough, you should know better than to go by stereotypes. I've seen as how Muslims are judged by stereotypes themselves. So, um, you know, that, that has been a problem for me is that sometimes I would just completely stay away from a masjid because sometimes you just don't want to deal with the people's ignorance. But uh, for the most part, I've had, you know, very good experiences. And, you know, I've grown. And the, the Muslim community has helped me to grow. But one thing that I would say to a revert is because of the situation that we have here in the US if you're gonna to go to a masjid stick with one masjid because if you're hopping all over the place nobody's gonna know you and you're just gonna be treated differently so just just you know get yourself settled down and uh, yeah it, it's simple it's not if you make things difficult then it's gonna be difficult like if you want like a, a lot of reverts that I know they uh, they only stick with reverts and uh, you know I was like that you know my best friends they, they were reverts so but uh, you know so long as you don't just yeah you, you just have to keep yourself Islam, Islamically uh, oriented because Allah did create us into different tribes and and, uh, and nations but that's only so that we would get to know one another yeah yeah but uh, Mike Free Yes, I agree with you. Uh, the reason why I ask that question is because uh, a lot of reverts sometimes they leave the mosque and uh, they don't want to leave Islam, but because they find hard, uh, they find it hard to interact or to get along with other people. They just basically don't go to the mosque. And you said that, and I think that's not a, a just a revert issue. I think it's more than um and the diversity of Muslims that are in the U.S. I think that must that's would like you said the background. Somebody just said something about curry. You have to try the curry, spicy food. I think so. So it's just like uh, there's a lot of uh, traditionals and cultures that are involved in the religion, and that's why I tell people be careful with mixing up culture, tradition, and religion. Religion is religion, culture is culture. Pakistani people, Moroccan people, they will gather and have couscous. Pakistani, they will have biryani. That's fine, but they're Muslims. Don't mix the culture and, and the traditions with the religion. So I would like you to talk about this if you had that my question. 
Okay, well, I know. Delicious. So we're not going to fight. If biryani is fine, that's fine. But we're going to have to pray five times a day. That's fine. We're not going to get mad because somebody doesn't like biryani. You know, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I give the mic to Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, um, one thing that I would say is try praying with a lot of curry in your stomach. You're going to be in a lot of pain. Um, I was actually, uh, yeah, it's the truth. But, you know, I, I like, sometimes I like it, but, you know, it's it's not my culture. It's not really my tradition, but occasionally it's okay. But for me, it's, it's uh, uh, for instance, you know, the brothers in Tabliki Jamaat. Um, you know, I've I spent a lot of time with those brothers. Like, uh, you know, I've been for 40 days. Whenever I was a new Muslim, like a a year or two years into being a Muslim, I you know I went to uh, I went to a, a city for for 40 days, and you know all there was to eat was like Pakistani South Asian food, and it really it really kind of. Uh, <laughs> it, it did a, it, it did a, certainly did a job on my stomach. But um, you know, that's one thing that uh, this is just one thing that goes without saying is that nobody's going to be perfect. You've got good and bad in every group. But uh, the bottom line is is that we're all Muslims and we cannot be, de we cannot degrade another people, and we just have to know that you know we have to remember that we all we're, we are all from. Uh, Adam alayhi salam and uh, and Hawa alayhi, alayhi salam. Let's see. So you know, as many cultural differences as there are going to be, it's you know what? It, it's a good experience. It's a good experience. And sometimes, from my experience, um, it's good to get outside of your shell because if you are only staying with what you know then the way that you view the world is going to be you're, you're just going to suffer from tunnel vision and if you're going to suffer from tunnel vision then you know you're you're just there's no need in blinding yourself so uh, <sighs> forgive me for the uh, the way that I'm speaking I hope that everybody understands what it is that I'm trying to say Assalamu alaikum Yeah, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, the the other stuff, yeah, that that you know you might experience as a reward is that you will sometimes be questioned a, a very uh, a straightforward questions. Uh, in some cultures, it's okay. Like the people would tell you, "Did you change your name? You cannot wear that, brother. You should be writing." And you will have some kind of like um, you don't want to really offend the other person. But you might feel like you know it's a little bit too much uh, inter intervention in, in in your personal space as an American as an American. I mean, I know for for Americans that it's always going to remain. There is a lot of things that as a you know if you're a revert, it doesn't matter. There are things that people sometimes find like you know questions and or you know like I said, people try to try to just come to you with with, with, the, with, the, with the way that people don't like it. So. That's the reason why I told you that um, it's just uh, uh, the Muslims, the way we live, we have been, you know, we lived back home or we, we, we grew up is different. And um, that's why I, I, I you know, I, uh, I find a lot of this uh, hard communication, problem of communicating with Muslims in the masjids. Uh, and and, and it's, it's just something that uh, um, has been, uh, I have noticed in, in, the, in the U.S., uh, back home, where I come from, I, fa I found more, more. I found more ease in, in in dealing with my own people because I just know exactly how they think, and you know, and you know, you don't really feel that. Uh, I'm Morocco. I'm from Morocco, but uh, in here, in the, in the United States, the mosques, like you said, it's it's, it's just, just every mosque is different, and then and then you go to a masjid, and subhanAllah, sometimes you find a masjid is even Shia or or masjid is Sufi. Or may, maybe a lot of bid'ah, you know. Like I went to certain masjid and I, I just see how they pray. I was, uh, I was shocked because I never seen the way people pray like that. And I just had to pray and leave because I'm not there to argue with these people or even to, to change them. But because it's not going to be, uh, uh, 
I'm not talking about the Sufis people. I'm talking about the prayers and where the people they do in the masjid and people how they pray to Allah. There's bidah. There's a lot of innovations. There's a person that have knowledge. I'm not talking about myself, but if you have knowledge in Islam, and you would know the differences between right and wrong. Okay, and I you don't even want to want to say okay, what are you guys doing? But you just see like there's so many things in front of you that are not Islamic, such as like um, I went to this masjid and they were like. Uh, they were like, um, they were like, uh, we prayed, and then as before we finished the prayers, we he go, they go like Al Fatiha, and then they go like Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alamin, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Maalik, Yawm Al Din, Ya Kan Abdul Wa Ya Kan Sa'in, Adina Sirat Al Mustaqim, Sirat Al Adin, Al Amta Alim. But they keep saying it, they keep doing it right after the prayer. All together, they all read the Fatiha, and they read it loudly and. And subhanallah, and then when we were making the prayer, before we put the sujood, as soon as I put my head over the carpet, they stand up real quick. Before we finish the sujood, I'm already, they already stand up. I have to stand up right quick. And then before we make the rukur, they already went back. From, it was like the fastest train ever. It's like, you know, no stops, no stops. And I couldn't even say, I couldn't even say subhanallah bi an'adhim. Uh, and subhanallah, and that's why I, I, I feel that, okay, let me just go, let me just go, I'm not going to really argue with this, I'm not going to really fight. And uh, I remember when I went to the masjid, a brother of mine took me, inshallah, and yeah, and that's why I'm saying, Akhi Abdullah, just to wrap it up, I don't want to get too, too, too broad, just, just talk about the whole issues in different angles. Uh, the whole, what I want to say is that, there's things that you might see, strange things going on, a lot of stuff that you might not really f understand. That has nothing to do with the religion. As you, you said, something really interesting. The Quran is the guidance and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When it comes to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you just just focus on your research, understand your source where you get the knowledge from, the website and books and scholars, and who is uh, who is right into that matter, because we have just many many who just take the mic uh, or take golden tv or just take a pen and want us to tell us what the religion is about and you know i mean you know exactly what i'm talking about so you're gonna have to really find this 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 huge controversial uh issues in the religion that are that really are already clear by the, the islam, islam and by the sunnah and by the quran but people keep really keep really they keep looking at anything to make it small mi minor issues to make it a, 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 a you know a bigger issue and not to focus on the principles of the religion and that's the most important things like prayers and fasting doing hajj and basically uh like sister musafira may allah uh, reward her she said uh, and your tongue and uh, what you say and uh, what you talk about uh, and and what you did you know, rather than just trying to talk about other people, try to talk about uh, uh, this guy is kafir, he's a disbeliever, she is not a kafir, and just issues that are not going to benefit us. I'm not saying we shouldn't even talk about these things. We, we can talk about this. It's our religion to understand and have knowledge and do, but not to take it, not to be our main, main uh, 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 reason of being religious people, of being Muslims. It's just to bring this issue, uh, debating, arguing, you know, and that's why I don't like, I don't like when I have people come into the room, I don't like to argue with them regarding their, the, 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 and debate with them on religion, rather than, I, I, I try as much as I can to discuss with them what religion of Islam is about, what do we believe, and that's it. I'm not going to try to stress everybody, stress somebody, or get stressed about certain things that I know that person, not even know who, what, that, what, what that person is here for, why he's coming here to argue or to just tell, tell me something just to, uh, you know, it's not worth it. And, and I would like to uh, have one last question for you, is that how do you deal with, 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 with yourself as a, as a river in your job, in your community, with Muslims and non-Muslims? Like, do you really tell people you're Muslim or you just keep it yourself? Uh, and how do you deal with people asking you questions? Because now you've been seven years as a Muslim. Do you, do you, do you people ask you questions uh, on religion? And 
do like people feel more comfortable talking to you because they know you're a river or people not try to talk to you because they don't want to offend you on religion how do you deal with this as a, as a, as a river living in the US uh, with your with your with the most closest people to you whether they are Muslims or not Muslims especially about non Muslims at your job if you're working how do you deal with them regarding and do you know do they know you Muslim do you practice your religion like do you go to the masjid do you tell them that you have to pray do you fast and how they take it you know uh, do you feel that they don't they don't really want to see you? Uh, they feel that you've been brainwashed or something, or they don't respect you as a? Because I, I like at my job, they know I'm a Muslim, so they know uh, I was born as a Muslim. So that question doesn't even come to their mind. But I just want to know if you are a revert, how do you deal with them? I give you the mic. Uh, thank you, brother. Um, well. I don't really make too much of a big deal about it. With the people that live around me in my area, they know that I'm Muslim, but uh, you know, just uh, I try not to talk about it or, or show it too much because uh, it's you know people they do suffer from Islamophobia, you know, just a lot of the, uh, the things that are that are said about Islam. So I honestly, when it comes to religion, I really I I've just conditioned myself to not really talk about it with other people all that much, um, except if they, if they really want to know, then yeah, I'm completely open about it. And uh, you know, I, I let other people know that I'm Muslim. But um, one thing for myself as a as a revert, I, it's it's just, I guess you could say it's it's my religion, but it's not, uh, it's not my badge. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the people that are that are around me, uh, you know, a lot of them, yes, they do know I'm Muslim, and you know, I I wear a kufi, and you know, uh, and I go with, I wear, you know, things that a Muslim would wear occasionally. Doesn't mean that I walk around in a thobe or anything. But um, most, for the most part, nobody knows that I'm a Muslim because you wouldn't think that I'm a Muslim. You know, whenever I. Uh, go to do anything, nobody ever, nobody ever thinks about it. Uh, about work, um, because of my experiences in the past, um, I try to not let anybody know about me being a Muslim, because that, that complicates things. Like, uh, yeah, well, for, for instance, for instance, um, I had a problem with a marriage license, because in New York you're supposed to get a marriage license after you marry. So I had a whole big problem with this, and it wouldn't. I we were not able to get the marriage license because, uh, although my wife has spent, you know, an overwhelming majority of her life here in America, she's she's Egyptian, so she has the Egyptian passport, and it was expired because she doesn't go to Egypt all that much. So because that was a problem, I had to get in contact with the uh, with the masjid, which took forever and you know I finally found uh, an imam that would that would that would, uh, that would host our wedding ceremony so afterwards whenever you know everything was finished and we were talking with the sheikh uh, he wrote up on a sheet of paper you know on you know official paper that I've been you know Islamically married to my wife and just that sort of thing, and you know, because the marriage license was a problem, the way that I saw it was is that if they just to be to make sure everything is uh, is all right when it comes to taxes for my job and everything, uh, just in case they didn't think I was trying to to slip something by them, um, for whatever reason, I brought my marriage certificate that came from the masjid, and the person made a copy of it. And next thing I know, I am unemployed and without any real open reason that they would tell me. So because this person uh, was a revert, I guess, and f just for whatever reason, whenever they saw something Islamic that had my name on it, they dropped me and, you know, it 
really tough because being that, yeah, it is, but you can't really do anything about it because they can they can say for whatever reason they're gonna, you know, let you go. I mean, another thing is that, uh, for instance, I told you I told you brothers that I was legally blind. Um, to find work, being legally blind, like I can look you in the face. And you know I'm lo I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you I'm looking you and looking at you to your face, but uh, because my eyes look like they're going, going, you know I guess you could say behind your shoulder, they think that there must be something wrong with me when in fact it's just it's just the way that Allah made the muscles of my of my eyes work. So being somebody that's legally blind, finding a job is really hard, but. Uh, the only reason I'm saying that is because people can let you go for whatever reasons, or not for for whatever reason, and not just about letting you go, um, even when you're interviewing for work. So I had to become very cautious, and I, you know, I had to really hide my Islam afterwards. So, you know, I've at times, if there was a masjid around the corner, I would run over to the masjid for my lunch break and make my salat or if I couldn't do that I would just have to pray in the bathroom and that's one thing that about reverts is that sometimes sometimes the, the circumstances of reverts are, are just so difficult that of all places sometimes you have to pray in a bathroom of all places but uh, yeah so that's I just keep things sort of private I mean I'm 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 in the community, but I don't really talk about it to people that uh, just, yeah, you, you guys know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say. Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Mike's free. Yes, Akhi Abdullah, it seems that you had a hard time after you become a Muslim, and uh, it was really shocking what you said regarding the uh, you know the job that they didn't take uh, a, a decision regarding who would which should should they really keep you and should they get rid of you and I think the the, the first thing that came to them is that oh this guy is not even in a, he's a religious person he's a he's a Muslim and uh, they didn't even there was a shock shock but uh, it's the way they handled it more than they saw you as a as a dangerous person rather than they didn't even think about the reason why but it's subhanallah it's really uh, hard uh, this is was it was a uh, yes I know it, uh, it was like a very painful and very shocking to you and um, I just want to tell you that every we all go through the test uh, I understand and and uh, it's just like uh, I wish that you could have uh, really uh, handled it I mean I don't know if you if you did have the time, but I would I would really try to really if I had uh, if they didn't give me an explanation, I could just take them to uh, to court. I mean, and I tell them exactly what happened, and I don't have to really take the whole company. I could take that person specifically, the person that you gave him the marriage paper, and basically just uh, put them a stop on what they're doing. I mean, I'm sure that they will open up an investigation, and I'm sure that person who ever took the decision against you, yeah. Uh, they will have to have a come up with something. Is that is was uh, was it really discrimination? Was it just because he he showed something that legally married uh, and as as a religious person? I mean, I would you could do you could do a lot of stuff and um, to challenge them, but they 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 they, they could come up with anything. But um, at least you could just uh, make a point because uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will come up with something for for you don't worry about what they are, are up to because if they're gonna if they're gonna try to uh, come up with something uh it doesn't matter Akhi. wallahi trust me you want to have you have a lie you muslim um you could take it to the to the you could take him you could take it to the to the end and let them see let them come up whatever they're gonna come up you never know uh, subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa kayda wa akidu kayda famahil kafirin am hidhum wayda and they plot and i i have and they make their plan and i have made, and i made my own plan so let them plan until they they find that they uh, 
they're gonna feel in there but inshallah just uh you left it alone it's okay uh i don't really really blame you because i have myself missed i've been in that same situation so there is no need for me to go after those people i leave them to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i just walk away i just believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide me with a better place but there are all going to be challenges as muslims and i uh, have you know we're all going to be tested in every way subhanallah at work at our family and our, by my, ourselves uh, especially uh, uh, living as Muslims right now it's just like a biggest test so so um, yes we're gonna have to have to really uh, 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 be in, in dispositions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said huh? so, so you could be as witness against these people so subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you going to be witnessed so we've been tested we will live among the non-Muslims and we will be tested and we will be mistreated and we will be a witness against them in the Day of Judgment. So uh, we are not just going to be here and we are going to, on the day, on, and not, we're not going to, like, uh, uh, um, we have no purpose. So for us Muslims, for us Muslims living among non-Muslims, and uh, we are we are we are witness witnessing what they're doing. So that's why I tell I tell the brothers and sisters and myself that sinning, sinning and supporting sins, and uh, helping uh, everything that uh, you know Islam forbid uh, is very very uh, uh, very very uh, uh, um, how do I say um, it, it's a, it's a, it's it's going to be hard. Uh, it's, it's going to be a, a, a big major sin uh, in front of Allah because you, uh, you uh, we as Muslims we we, are, we should know better basically we should know that uh, supporting these things as we are supporting the shaitan the, 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 the devil and we are we are going against Muslims even if we're not if we're not really attacking Muslim directly we are helping uh, uh, others to uh, uh, Helping uh, these these things that Allah forbid in the Quran. So um, uh, I would like to uh, just uh, stop here because um, uh, I think uh, you have really answered a lot of questions. Uh, and uh, inshallah, if you have to say something, uh, uh, you can take the mic and just uh, uh, tell us uh, uh, what do you uh, what do you what do you really feel. Uh, as uh, w w what do you really want to, uh, uh, to uh, like? How do you how do you how do you feel like as a Muslim? Do you really want to uh, uh, really uh, feel that you have you want to do something in the religion? Like, uh, do you have any good intention in doing something for 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 this religion? Do you really feel like uh, you really wanted to go somewhere else or, or or study something or open up something? Because I myself wish that uh, right now I could be uh, uh, teaching. You know, I wish I could be teaching uh, kids uh, the religion, but I can't do it because of my, <laughs> the nature of my job. But I just ask Allah, maybe one day I would do it. But um, I don't know. Everyone here has something to say. So, inshallah, I uh, I just wanna, uh, uh, you know, it was an it was really, mashallah, interesting, uh, interesting story that you share with us. Can you read surah to Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad? Short surah. You didn't read no Quran, akhi. That's everybody. Everybody left. So don't worry. <laughs> I give you the mic. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, yeah, I can read uh, Surah Al Khalas, but uh, I get shy. Uh, did I just say it's sky? I'm sky, bro. No, I meant to say I'm shy. But uh, yeah, I'm just I can't really. I can. I know plenty of servers. I know like over ten, but um, it uh, <laughs> I'm just too shy for that. But um, what can I say? Well, you know the reason that uh, that I really kept the reason that I really stayed here is because. You know, there are a lot of Muslims out there, like new Muslims and non-Muslims, and a lot of them, they may not really be aware of really, I guess, what to do. And a lot of people, they they never really hear about the experiences of other people. And sadly enough, a lot of these people that become Muslim, they a lot of people, they just don't have anybody. So they're, they're a loner. And I know what that's like. That's that's how I was. But uh, 
you know, just the reason I answered all the qu uh, the reason I answered all of these questions is because, you know, if I could help somebody out there, then then that's all that matters. Because there's a lot of people out there that um, they have a slam, but uh, sometimes you get a gem, but uh, sometimes you don't use it the way that uh, that it really should be used for. But instead of getting into any other things, I'm pretty tired, and I think I'm probably going to get offline. But uh, I'll stay on here for a few more minutes. But uh, alaikum. Jazakallah.